Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we have a new A Better Commandry guide, and this one I have aptly named the Building Guide to End All Guides, because recently after playing the game on patch 1.4 and beyond with the new building changes, I feel like I have the building structures down pretty pat for a foolproof plan of how to build your commanderies for the most efficient economy in the game. So without wasting much time, let's jump into this guide. First off, I have to kick things off with a discussion about administrators because they are the backbone of any economy. Now, you could build your commandery correctly, but if you don't focus on the commanderies that have the administrators, then you're going to suffer. And there are three classes of characters in the game that are ideal for administrators for different types of commanderies. So let's go over these real quick. First off, you have the champion administrator. Now, these administrators are going to have high resolve as their main stat because the resolve stat is the main stat for the champion class. And what resolve does is it provides you with population growth. Now, this is often overlooked, but the population growth you're getting from that high resolve stat is applied to your commandery per county. So if you see your resolve stat that's granting you about 10k population growth, that's 10k per number of county in your commandery. So if you're looking at an ideal commandery like Yangzhou, where you have three additional specialty counties aside from the settlement county, then you're going to get that 10k times 4, or 40k population growth per turn. And this is going to be key, because most of the peasantry multiplier you will receive in peasantry-focused commanderies are going to be based on population. And one of the greatest setbacks for population growth is negative public order. But... Public order, even at negative 100, which is the worst case you can have, is going to cap your population loss at 12k population per county. So you have a big commandery like Yangzhou, once again using the same example, then you're going to lose 48k population per turn at maximum public disorder. And you can overcome that using a combination of buildings, reforms, and your champion administrator. This is the reason why you can pretty much only use champion administrators if you want to focus on a peasantry income commandery. Additionally, using the skill tree on the champion, you can gain 20% peasantry income, 15% industry income, 5 food, and 15 reserves. And we're going to talk about how all these stats are used later on in our builds. And of course, you could have very good traits on these characters as well that could farther boost your income uh, whether it's all source, peasantry, industry, or commerce. They're all going to be very useful. Next, we have the Sentinel. Now, these are the classic ideal administrators. And the reason why is because they have high expertise as their stat, and high expertise grants you discount on building cost. So they are really good in the early game for underdeveloped commanderies as you're going to have very cheap buildings once you put a sentinel administrator in. On top of that discount, he will also grant you 40% commerce income and 15% industry income as well as plus 5 public order. So they are going to be your key commerce and industry commandery administrator. Lastly, we have the most flexible class for administrators in the strategist. Now, Strategist isn't going to give you much help with their stat focused on cunning, which doesn't do anything for administrator roles, but you do still get 40% commerce, 15% industry, 5 food, and 15 reserves from the skill tree. And they're going to be ideal for harbor peasantry focused commanderies, industry and commerce, all sorts of combinations. They can really be plugged in anywhere. And lastly, the most important factor for all administrators, no matter what class you pick, even if you don't have a good champion sentinel strategist and you just have to stick in a vanguard or a commander, they're all going to give you 15% all income sources in that commandery, as well as the most important stat, minus 30% corruption. Now, corruption is the bane to all income after the mid game. They're going to be what cause you to have bad economies. And if you need help with corruption, there's a separate corruption guide in our ABC playlist. So definitely go check that out. But with that said, the reason why you want to focus on commanders where you have administrators is because administrators themselves deduct 30% corruption in that commandery. And that's going to be giving you all the gains you need 
in those commanderies, and that's why you should focus on them first. So moving on, if I'm telling you guys to just focus on the commandery for income in the commanderies that you have administrators, what should you do with the rest of them? Well, here are some builds. The most common build you're going to be throwing around here is the food build. And this build just requires a small city, which consumes two food, provides 25 peasantry income plus 25% commerce income. That doesn't really matter. We're not really hoping to get money out of this commandery. And we want it to be a small city because at small cities, you get access to level five land development and government support buildings, which is kind of rare as most level five upgrades require a small regional city. So this is ideal for keeping your food costs low, but food production high. And by having a small city, it requires the enemy armies to have a siege weapon to launch their attack right away, or else they have to at least waste one turn sieging down your city, giving you a little bit of time to counterattack. And lastly, outside of the food producing land development and the food producing and slightly income producing government support, you need to add in the coin maker. Now, this is a building that you should be spamming after the mid game in pretty much all your commanderies without administrators because of the minus 10% corruption from adjacent commanderies. This is going to be your main weapon to combat corruption throughout your whole empire as you continue to expand. So this is definitely something you should focus on. Now to alter this build a little bit, for example, let's say you have a commandery that have a fishing port. Then what you should do is simply upgrade your small city to a city so that you have an extra slot to build the same three buildings again. And it's not going to hurt you food wise because it only costs you four food to upgrade from a small city to a city. And you're getting at least five food back from the fishing port. If you don't consider any of the multipliers, you're going to be applied on that base level plus five that you see there. And you're going to get a little bit of extra income from the 130 commerce income. But once again, we're really not looking for money out of these commanderies. We're just looking for a good food production to support our other peasantry income focus builds, which will be consuming food as you'll be selling them for more peasantry income. So another neat trick you could use when building commandery is that let's say you take down an enemy commandery and the AI has already over leveled this commandery to a regional city or something even bigger. And you know that you don't want to invest an administrator here because they build it poorly or it's just not a good commandery, but you have all these level five buildings already. So as I was downgrading the commandery in my games, I noticed that the level five buildings don't downgrade when you go from a small regional city back to a small city. So this means when you have the opportunity to upgrade your building to level five, for example, the level five grand fishing port, uh, which gives you extra food and 30 extra commerce or a level five grand treasury mint, which gives you five additional percentage of corruption reduction for all adjacent commanderies or for the ability to flip from one branch of the government support to the other branch that solely focus on food production in the willing machine workshop, which is actually the only building in the entire government support chain that requires a small regional city. So you could definitely spend the time and money to upgrade your commandery up in the early game when you don't have that many good commanderies and perhaps you had administrator here and you are focused on a certain build. But then later on in the game, when you get a better commandery and you want to focus on that because it has more potential by having better counties, you can downgrade these early game commanderies back into these builds that have level five buildings with its effect while wasting less food because you're only using a small city build. So that can be applied to all types of build used in this guide. So definitely be flexible and keep that in mind when you capture a very high level settlement. So before you downgrade everything quickly, you could get a few level five buildings squeezed in there to give you better effects going forward. Lastly, if you don't need the corruption reduction, perhaps it's super early game for you or super late game where you have excellent items and excellent prime minister roles all filled up with honest and corruption is no longer existent in your entire empire because you already reached that magical minus 100 corruption reduction empire wide then what you can do with your last slot here in this build because you are going to have three slots because small cities come with three slot is that you can put in a training camp 
These are excellent buildings. They give you two additional seasonal retinue deployment, which is super underrated. They're going to keep your population low, so you're not going to have any public order issues. You're going to get a little bit of 5% redeployment cost boost. This is less relevant now since that you have Imperial Courts with seven characters that can provide you Prime Minister, Air, and Leadership boost in the late game so that you, it's very easy for you to find four characters with flexibility to give you that 100% free teleport redeployment strategy. But the three rank and the two seasonal retinue deployment are still excellent, especially if you want to teleport armies all around, you're going to need a lot of seasonal retinue deployment slots. Moving on away from our food build, we have the Industry and Commerce builds. Now these builds are also without administrators and the basic version is this small city, coin maker, artisan workshop, guest house. Now of course you could do a few swaps. If corruption is not an issue then definitely swap the coin maker to the income producing version and if you have access to tea definitely swap the guest house to the tea house. Now and if you're downgrading a commandery down from a higher level one that you had in the early game to a lower level one, you can easily get level five buildings for all three of these and just keep them as you downgrade as you send your administrator from before to a better commandery like Taiyuan or Jianye. So this is the very simple basic build. And you have a fishing port like before. What you want to do is go for the trading port version that gives you income which will require you to upgrade your small city to a city to make room for extra slot, which is not a big deal. So that's pretty basic. That's going to be your industry commerce commanderies, basically for all sorts of commandery with just one county that produces either industry or commerce, and that's not going to be worth your investment with the administrator. So what about those commanderies that are your true money makers that you need to put administrators in? Well, this is the bill for you for industry and commerce. You want at least a small regional city. You want the Grand State Workshop, which is your level 5 state workshop building that gives you 500 flat industry income. Your Master Liqueur Artisan building, which is your level 5 private workshop that gives you a whopping 190% income from commerce, 40% from industry. You want a Grand Guest House, or even better if you have tea, a Grand Tea House. And for your fourth building here, you want to go with the Office for Archives and Seals. And this building is going to give you 15% income from all source, which is pretty good. But most importantly, 20% corruption reduction in adjacent commanderies and including your own commandery. Because like I said, if you want a good economy, you need to fight that corruption. So that building is fourth. And the fifth building, which is the building you should be building after you reach a small regional city, is going to be your Bureau of Trading Association, which is your marketplace building. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just want to go for that 150% income from commerce. You don't build this first because the private workshop is just much better. As you can see, you get to level five. It only costs you 30 upkeep per turn, and you get 40% extra income from commerce and 40% extra income from industry. Sure, you don't have the 50% trade influence, but in the late game, when you don't have that many trade routes because you're at war with a lot of factions, it's not going to be doing too much for you to have that 50% trade influence. You much rather have that 40% income from industry. But this is not it. This build can still be adapted. Uh, for example, if you have a trading port. If you have a trading port, then definitely upgrade that to level 5 for the maximum amount of commerce income and commerce income boost. And the one thing you have to notice here is that there is an exception to all these builds that I'm providing today. And that exception is if you have silk and spice, then your builds are going to be different. Because if you're focusing on your economy on silk and spice, if you're focusing on silk, then you need to be spamming marketplace buildings in all your commanders. You need to be upgrading your commandery to a small regional city, upgrade that marketplace to level 5 where it's boosting faction-wide silk multipliers, and then you want to downgrade your commandery back down to not waste food, but keep that marketplace building, because that's going to be key to boosting your silk income throughout those three counties. And if you have a spice-based income, then you want all your harbor buildings to be going for the spice version. So that's the only thing you want to keep in mind in these builds, that if you have those two income sources, then definitely go for those type of buildings. 
Aside from that, if you don't have a harbor building but you want to go to a six building build, there's definitely options for you as well with the industry and commerce focused builds. You can just simply add in a level five labor building. Now this building is going to provide you with 40% income from industry and you only really want to consider building this building in about three commanderies, Taiyuan, Jianye, and Puyang because those commanderies have two specialty county focus on industry. So you're gonna be getting about 1,500 base industry income. And that's when this 40% is gonna give you at least 600 gold. So that's when this building is worth it. Otherwise, you don't really want this building because the 80K population growth is actually gonna generate you a big population growth issue that you otherwise might not have in commanderies that are focused on industry and commerce where population tend to not grow as fast but that's definitely something you can think about farming rebels in the late game is not very hard you just stick three generals there and you just kill every rebel spawn every turn and losing population is not going to hurt you in these commanderies because you're not scaling off of that so with that said we can talk about the peasantry build which do scale out of population and as I said before, if you want to have a peasantry focused build, you definitely need a champion administrator in these commanderies. Maybe you can get away with a strategist, but that requires a very specific build that I'll talk about a bit later. And here's the very bland vanilla build for the peasantry focus. You want to first hit your small regional city. Early game, you're maxing out that tax collection building. It's going to give you free income. It's going to give you rebels to farm. But it's going to give you public order issue, which is something you just have to live with for peasantry focused builds. And for your land development, you want to go with the grand food market, which is going to cost you 18 food per turn, but it's going to give you 280 peasantry income and 24K local county population growth. Why does it say local county? It's because if it doesn't say that, it's per county, just like the resolve stat on your champion administrator or on certain reforms that says 3K population growth, that 3K population growth is every county. So if you have four counties, that's actually 12K population growth per turn in that commandery. And next, for the government support, you definitely wanna go with the 100%, 100% boost in terms of food and peasantry. This is the best peasantry income focus build in the government support building branches. And next is the new building that got added in in 1.4 patch. And this is the main branch of the administrative office building. Previously, this branch didn't do very much. Now it costs you public order, but grants you a big chunk of peasantry income. The one I'm showing you here is the level four version of this building. There is a level five version called the Imperial Palace, and that can only be built once in a commander that's an Imperial city. So you can definitely use that version, um, just that you can pick one commander to do it in. So definitely pick carefully. Obviously, if you have an excellent peasantry commandery, definitely put it there. And lastly, we're also going to go back to the Grand Treasury Mint. This is 300 flat industry income, which we don't really care about in our peasantry focused builds. It's nice to get this little bit of income, but what we really want is the 15% corruption reduction. Uh, for adjacent commanders as well. The reason why we put this building in is because unlike the industry and commerce builds where we can build an archive for office and seal, that's your administrative office building. You can't branch out both branches. So if you're going to get the peasantry income branch, you're going to lose out on that 20% corruption and you're going to lose out on the 15% all income source boost. So you're going to make up for that with the Grand Treasury Mint, and you're also going to contribute to your neighboring commanderies by helping them reduce their corruption to make them more efficient overall. And obviously with any peasantry build, you want to keep upgrade your settlement size. You want a higher level settlement so you have a higher population cap so you can hit that 350% peasantry income boost that's given to you, I believe at 5.5 million population. Might be six, but I think it's 5.5, which is just perfect for a large regional city for four county commanderies. If you have three counties, uh, then you need to upgrade at least to an uh, imperial city to reach that 350%, which is kind of awkward because you're wasting a bit of food. So it's most ideal in three specialty county commanderies, so total four counties, including the settlement. Now, moving on, as you upgrade, 
those settlements, you get an additional six slot. Now, sometimes that six slot is just going to be a commerce harbor uh, if it's you know adjacent to an ocean or water source. And if you have that, you can definitely go for the income route since we're focused on income and take the 200 commerce and 75% commerce income boost. And in this case, you want to alter your land development to the livestock market of the commandery capital. This is the farthest branch on the land development tree, and it's going to cost you six extra food, but it's going to give you 20 extra peasantry, which usually isn't worth the six extra food, as you can easily trade the six extra food for much more income. But it does give you 20 additional percentage of commerce boost. So there's a little bit of synergy between this and your harbor building. And especially if you have like a fishing port or some sort of trade port as one of your counties, because you're not going to have three peasantry counties uh, unless you're Changwu, which is the only commandery in the game with three peasantry counties. So in those cases, you're synergizing off your counties and your harbor. That's when you switch over to this version of the land development building. Now, if you don't have a harbor, but you need a six slot because you're upgrading these settlements anyways, what you want to do is put in that labor building again. And this labor building is going to give you that 80K population growth, which is going to farther boost your population up. Now, we already have this population proof because we have the champion administrator in. This building is going to allow you to put strategist administrators in because at 80K population growth in local county, you can counteract max public order issues, right? You have negative 100 public order in a four county commandery, that's 48K loss per turn. With this building, you'll still always grow population and you will hit your 350% peasantry income, even with the strategist as your administrator. And this gives 40% extra income from industry, which is quite useful because a lot of these ideal peasantry build commanderies will have a tool maker or an iron mine or a copper mine. For example, Yangzhou has a livestock farm, has a farmland, and has a tool maker. So that's when this building is going to give you a little bit of extra income and also going to give you that population growth. Now, if you have a champion as your administrator already and you built this building and your population went all the way up to that you hit your 350% target, and you don't need your population to grow anymore, then get rid of this building at that point. Because this building costs you 80 upkeep per turn for 40% income from industry, and you can easily achieve the same thing with a private workshop. So here's a level five private workshop that gives you 190% income from commerce in case you have a commerce commandery or a harbor or something like that. And it's only gonna cost you 30% upkeep per turn. And even if you don't have anything commerce related, you're going to save money just with the upkeep. It's not much money, but you know, why not? Why have that huge population growth with draining 50 extra gold per turn when you can just build this? So that's all the builds I have for you guys today. And I think with these builds, you can build every commandery in the game efficiently and achieve very decent income to support you in your wins. And you're going to be rolling in gold. You're going to have thousands, if not millions of gold sitting there useless in the late game because most of your commanderies are efficient you're not wasting money on commanderies that's not going to generate you money and you have all of these really great administrator focused commanderies that are boosting your income so with that said i'm going to leave you guys with a little cheat sheet here uh, this list provides all the commanderies in the game and i classified them into the types that you should be focused on on your left side is going to be your food commanderies which is pretty much your useless commanderies where you're just spamming the food build and for the commerce and industry builds on the left side of the screen are the ones with one county where you just not invest much in it unless this is your early game and you don't have a better commander to focus on then you could definitely focus on it in the beginning upgrade it to a small regional city get your level five buildings but once you get the ones on the right side swap over change your administrators, put them in these better commanderies, and then downgrade your earlier ones to a lower settlement level with higher level buildings so that you're still getting some use out of your early game investment. And some of these names will repeat. For example, Hepu is both on the food list and the peasantry list. The reason for that is because Hepu's extra county is a fishing port. And fishing port's really weird in the game because in the beginning, it costs you gold per turn and gives you just food. 
but at level five, you get a hundred commerce income and food with no upkeep. So it has the potential to generate something like a peasantry commerce build with a harbor building. But if you don't want to invest there, they're not the best investment. You can definitely just use them as food build and produce food from that fishing port anyways. So you're going to see those on both sides. So other than that, the only thing you might want to notice is that if you get spice or silk, those counties are what's important. The commandery doesn't matter. What matters after that point is building marketplace for silk and building harbor and trade ports for spice. And there's a separate guide for silk and spice income where I did all the math for how much money you can make potentially through the map by building correctly all over the map to boost those incomes through those three counties. So just because you have those resources in that county doesn't mean that county is better because those are faction wide income that you're generating. So that's it. That wraps up our guide. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. See you guys next time. Bye.